of the things that I think is really interesting in self-driving over recent years is that it seems a lot of the players have started to focus on trucks, highway driving. And in some way, I feel like it makes sense because highways are a bit more consistent than city traffic in terms of so the amount of variability encounter. At the same time, I mean, if a truck makes a mistake, the amount of mass it's carrying, I mean, the, the gravity, literally the gravity of the mistake is just so much bigger. So I'm curious yeah. you know, about the trade-offs there and how do you think about getting autonomy into trucks and where are we? I mean, how, yeah. how close are we? Yeah, and, and you're spot on. As we started the company, we, we began with light vehicles, uh, you know, passenger cars. And we did that for a few reasons. Um, you know, the, the first was that uh, you learn a lot more rapidly in urban driving. So if you think about a drive from San Francisco to LA down I-5, it takes about five hours. Uh, along the way, you're probably driving around the same six vehicles uh, and basically nothing happens. You know, and maybe something happens that's interesting once uh, through the whole trip. Mm -hmm. In contrast, if you drive, you know, through San Francisco or even just Mountain View, you know, or where I live, something interesting happens probably every thirty seconds. Uh -huh. uh, and so, if you think about the experience that you get as a as an engineering program, you think about the experiences you get and the data you can gather for the the, the ML systems. It's just much more viable and, and much more valuable, so much more efficient. So that's why we one of the reasons we focus there. The second is is exactly what you talked about. Just you think about the kinetic energy involved uh, with these systems, and if you have two light vehicles bump into each other at twenty five miles per hour, you have a fender bender, and everybody walks away. Um, a truck makes a mistake at high speed, and it can be a very a very rough day. And so early on, it makes more sense to be working at lower speeds with with less energy in the system. And the third for us was we didn't think you could see far enough to solve the trucking problem, mm. right? We had always, from day one, we wanted the Aurora driver to be a platform that spanned passenger cars and trucking. But we didn't know how to solve that problem. Um, and, you know, we, when I was at Google, we saw this as a limitation for why we were not going after highway driving early on. We just didn't believe we could see far enough. Um, and so this led us a, a couple of years ago to, well, during the first couple of years of the company for me to spend time. Uh, trying to find a way to unlock that capability. And, uh, and so ultimately, we found this company in Bozeman, Montana, with an incredible group of people who had been working on this really special kind of uh, LIDAR, frequency modulated continuous wave LIDAR, uh, that has a few really material benefits. One is because of the way it does measurement, which is a little different than kind of conventional pulse mm -hmm. LIDAR, we actually get a, a 10 to 20 fold amplification, which means we can use um, the same amount of energy and see further. Um, again, because we're looking at a, a, an AC coupled system instead of a DC coupled system, we're much less um, um, uh, susceptible to noise and you know things like the sun or mm -hmm. um, halogen headlights blinding the, the sensor. And then the third is we get to you exploit the Doppler um, uh, effect. So we can measure not just the location of points, but the speed of them, the radial speed of them as well. And that allows better reaction. Ultimately, we thought this technology would unlock the ability to see far enough so that you could, when you couple that with computer vision, when you couple that with some of the, the long range automotive radars, you'd actually get a robust sensing suite that would be sufficient to solve high speed driving. Uh, and so, so, so we've kind of tapped into that. And so now we've got a system, you know, we, we look at where we are with the Aurora driver, we've got the basic capabilities built up. Uh, we've got the ability to see far enough. And as we look at the economic opportunity, um, trucking feels like the right first application. Uh, part of it is what, you know, what you said, I characterize as, as we build a business, we can scale it through operations as opposed through technology. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, a mile of freeway in Texas looks a lot like a mile of freeway in Arizona. It looks a lot like a mile of freeway in Minnesota. Um, right? And there's, there's much more kind of structure to that environment. So once you crack it in one place, you should be able to operationalize and scale it versus um, you take an intersection in San Francisco and you go five blocks away from there. And it's a different set of actors. It's a different set of behaviors. It's a different geometry. It's a different scene, right? And so you have to do much more technology scaling to build that business. And then you transform that from, from San Francisco to um, Boston, and it's going to be all different again. 
Uh, and so we think that there's an operational, uh, uh, an advantage on the business side in trucking. There's a couple of other advantages. So, you know, if, if I want to go to the movie theater from my house, uh, I know how long it should take. There's a route that you should go down. Um, uh, and if I were to call an Uber to give me that trip and the driver took a different route and it got me there. So I missed the first, you know, 30 seconds of the next Marvel credits. Um, I'm going to be frustrated, right? Uh, because I know better. Whereas if I were to roll a toilet paper sat in the back of a truck, um, as long as I get to the destination within the couple of hours that I'm supposed to, I don't care, right? I'm, I'm not even conscious. Um, and so we can trade capabilities so that we maybe the truck drives on a route that we think is incrementally safer or incrementally easier to operate on. And we can take advantage of that when we're building our business early on, which I think is super valuable. And then finally, just economically, um, uh, we're providing a capability to drive vehicles and the value of that capability is higher in trucking than it is in moving people, right? It's, you know, truck driver gets paid about three times as much as a ride hailing driver. And so as we think about bringing a driver to market that, that works beside, you know, humans driving vehicles, there's just a bigger economic opportunity there. And early on, uh, our hardware will cost more because we won't have the benefits of scale. Uh, and so that economic opportunity, you know, that, that increased kind of um, value is, is meaningful to us. 